blue suit, blue vest, nice shirt, great behavior, great liar, even the better lie detector. Who else could it be than the mentalist? And the man who is portraying him, Simon Baker, because he is just as charming as the mentalist is in the TV series. The mentalist is one of my the most favorite TV series that I've ever seen and it also inspired me on starting the whole journey that I'm building right now. So when I moved to London, I didn't know what to do exactly. I knew I was interested in stuff like that and I started watching Mentalist because I've never seen it before and it just blew my mind. I said, I, wow, I want to do something similar. So in this video, we are going to talk about Simon Baker, the actor who is portraying the Mentalist, Patrick Jane. He is a director, actor, and in real life, he is really charming. I'm going to break down his behavior so there is something for everyone of us. So whether you are a fan of The Mentalist, the fan of Simon Baker, or you just want to improve your charm, charisma, this is the video for you and we are diving in right now. But before I do, hi everybody, Martin here. Thank you very much for clicking to this video. I hope it will fulfill your expectations and needs. If you have any questions during the video, please leave me a comment down below. I'll be very happy talking to you. If you want to get closer to what Mentalist is like, I have written an ebook which is over here, you can see it and you can download it for free in the description of the video. So if you feel like improving your skills, definitely check that out. And if you want to do maybe even more, there is a course that I have made on observing body language. It's called Body and Mind Reading and I'm not going to put a picture over here because it's the same like on that ebook. So just consider checking that out down in the description. And now we are diving into the video. So there is a fear like in the previous analysis of Elizabeth Phillips, which you can also find in the description or somewhere on my channel. There is no good nor bad behavior. You must remember that. There is nothing good or bad. There is some behavior that might be classified as a negative with the negative effects of other people and some behavior that might be classified like a positive one, which has a, some sort of positive effect on people that you are interacting with at that like moment. But when we are talking about charisma and charm and being the person who we are, we must speak about authenticity. Our uniqueness, our authenticity is something that might that, that might involve something of a negatively described body language. For example, Simon Baker, you will see that later on in the analysis, is often having a closed body language, like he's crossing legs and arms and he is sitting like that. That might be described as a negative sign, but it's a part of his uniqueness and part of his iconic style. And I, I would never describe that as something negative for him because it works for him really, really well. The same, he is he is expressing some sort of fidgeting and adjusting his clothes and a little bit of nervous behavior. But again, that is part of his charm. And I would never say that it is negative and it diminishing his charm or whatever. You must remember that whoever you are, you must be authentic. You must be yourself and you need to be charming and to be charismatic. But it doesn't mean that these negative traits are not affecting other people and that you can't or you don't you might not want to change them if you wish to change yourself to be better version of yourself there are definitely stuff that you can change and that you can improve so you have another effect on other people maybe or a better effect or stronger effect on other people so if you just want to be like that it's fine but you must be unique and you must be authentic and if you want to be even better, there is definitely a room and a way where to grow. I've divided the analysis into two sections, the verbal behavior and the body language. I will start with the verbal behavior and the way he speaks. After every point that I will make that you will see several clips of of Simon Baker doing the behavior so you actually can see what does it look like in real life. So you can copy that even better. So he has no problem admit that he is shy and nervous which is very strong, very strong behavior. Because when you are confident, no, I will start another way. When you are unconfident and you don't trust yourself, you keen to hide these inferior feelings and uh, feelings of submission. But when you are confident and you feel that way, you feel stress and stuff like that, you are not afraid to express that. When you are, for example, not playing a poker game, you don't want to express that at that moment, so you would lose. lose. But when you are in a regular social interaction and normal like setting, you are not afraid to express 
your weakness at that very moment like he is doing nervousness is very normal for human beings like we can feel nervous and we can express that like for example when i was giving a proposal to my friend who was just newly wedded i was super nervous to do it because there was a lot of people and i didn't know any of them so i just wanted to make a good impression of course so when i opened the speech i said well hey i'm a little bit nervous so in case that my mind is not working with me i have it written over here so if i'm not looking at you i'm reading the speech and they were super fine and by the end of the speech i said most of it from my memory anyways so just tell them beforehand that you might be a little bit nervous and it will just add up I on your confidence uh, yeah Well, I feel, I feel a little bit shy. Uh, how come? Because it's such a rowdy crowd you got here. Yeah. He takes a moment before he gets to the answer, which creates a feeling that he thinks about the stuff that he's going to say, which gives him more credibility and more validity to whatever he is going to say. So he is basically more trustworthy because it seems that he's taking time to answer the question. So whenever you want to like be, con be confident, be perceived confident, don't hastily spit out the answer without thinking about it. Actually, if you will think about that a moment, like a second or two, you will be perceived better and more, more knowledgeable about the stuff because it looks like you are searching your brain to prepare the best possible answer for that very moment. Acting or directing? Can't, can't we just have a little bit of both? Actually, I prefer directing. He gives stuff extra thoughts, which is very confident trait, because when you are dominant or confident, you tend to do things, you tend to initiate things and be the first who is telling them or doing them or like leading people. So the dominant or confident people smile more, will express emotions more, will initiate touch more, will like push the relationship to another state and this is the same when he is asked something he answers the question but you can see that he thought a little bit extra upon that what is like actually vital for that question and that leads to another point that he shares a little bit more than he is asked about so for example when he is asked whether he likes sausage roll or meat pie he answers that he definitely prefers sausage roll over meat pie but adds that he goes for a healthier version of the sausage roll and he wasn't asked that but he shares something that is super unimportant and super like not interesting but super something super small that creates a feeling that he is almost sharing something valuable something personal something small some small thing that people want to know about other people so they have a like feeling that they know the person the small stuffs about you this might be tricky for you to do it you must like get the right moment where to overshare where to overshare but when you do it in the right moment on the right time it really creates deeper bond and it make the other people like you a little bit more because they have a feeling because they know something small about you that is seemingly unimportant but is important for you enough to, to mention that and also when he's speaking about his wedding his, his wedding and that his daughter got one small ring as well and she lost it before they made it to the car it's again it's unnecessary to say it but you feel like you know him a little bit better that he gave you some valuable small piece of information that might be useful uh, to have my, just my wife uh, my daughter and I mm -hmm. and we gave Stella a little ring as well she lost it before we even got to the car. <laughs> but, uh, it was pretty cheap. Uh -huh, good. Yeah. Um, boys. Oh, almost 52. <laughs> Modesty as well. And yeah. did you get married there or here? Both. Two you... marriages, no divorces. Really? Good, yeah. I'm bringing up the stats. That's great. Keep um, getting married over and over. Yeah. No more divorces. And he's playing with words. He is using some of the words that might not be used, that could not be used, but he uses them anyway which suggests that free mind, that openness and that liberality maybe and that confidence and dominance that he's not afraid to overshare, to give something more than, he, than what he have been asked about. And I think it's important to have these sort of traits, those like 
three that I have mentioned, including the last one, this playing with words. Because by that you are showing that you are extra thinking about stuff and that you can use your own brain, your own mind, and a lot of people can't do it and don't want to do it and are not willing to do it and these people usually are dull. You don't want to be around them because they just are copying something that is like around them that they saw. But when someone is oversharing a little bit and expressing that they can think on their own, they have their own opinions, you actually realize that you can get something valuable out of them and I'm not meaning in a selfish way, but in a way that it can enrich you somehow and that these people are interesting and you want to be around and you want to be around them a little bit more than you are right now which is the part of the charming characteristics and charm that everybody I like being had. bored and I also like being busy I can find busyness in boredom the last thing the small one he uses jokes it's a very obvious thing it makes him look easygoing it makes him look fun and like easy to approach to and like familiar and all this positive stuff that everybody wants to have. So make jokes, think on your own. Don't be afraid to admit that you are shy or nervous. Take a moment before you answer because you can, because you are confident, because you are dominant and you can do whatever you want. You can initiate whatever you want and just because that's the reason why you do it. Time. Well, you good. should come and do one. Oh, with all my spare time, I'll be there. Yeah. I will. I would love to, though. I'd love to. Well, in all my spare time, I get here. No. <laughs> hey, you got me there. And now we are getting to the body language analysis of his and the traits that he is having and that is making him that confident. I will start with the nervousness over here as well. So in his body language, you can see that he is doing some sort of fidgeting, like this sort of meddling with palms and some strokes on a thigh or adjusting his jacket. These things are usually considered a sign as stress and that is normal. It just supports that he really is stressed at that moment for most likely, but only supports that he is truthful, he is genuine because he admits that. He says he's a little nervous, he's a little shy because there's like overcrowded and then he does that nervous body language thing. So not being afraid to express these moments, these feelings, because you don't need to hold them in when you are feeling feeling them actually so you let them go you let it flow and then there is a space for like positive emotions when the like the powerful negative are already gone as i have already mentioned he is sitting in a closed body language position and i spoke about that point already so i don't think i need to elaborate much about it but it makes him look like he's close to other people that are around him according to general body language interpretations but I wouldn't say that because I think he is just comfortable in that position. He might be a little bit more nervous personality. So it makes him feel comfortable sitting in that position. But I generally think that he is comfortable in that. And this sort of is iconic for him because he used to sit that in that show. And clearly he's set sitting that in real life as well. And I would recommend when you are having some of these traits that are not that severe like this one not to try to like overcome them and get rid of them because they can actually distinguish you from other people which will build up your uniqueness. He cares about the way he looks so he's adjusting his his jacket, his tie when it's something when, when he might feel it's a little bit wrong and to be considered harming you must usually follow some social norms and this is that social norm. You must fit in these norms and you must dominate them in some way. And by adjusting that, you tell that you are aware of other people around you and that you want to look nice for them. That you want to look nice for yourself and you want to look nice for, for the other one as well. And the opposite one of that is that you don't care at all how you look. And these people usually are very antisocial and they have problems to fit in in a society. 
and this might be some sort of geniuses or people that are just living on the edge of the society. That there are very few examples of them being considered charming and that other people might be might want to follow them and like copy their behavior and to sort of model them. So the point is care about the way you look and try to look the best you can and when there is something off try to like adjust yourself try to adjust yourself so you are the best looking for the situation where you are at the moment at his hands are always visible it's important for a very small reason and it's quite a small thing and yet it's a very powerful thing so when we are talking to people we are usually striving for preventing brain to ask some questions that might take away the person's attention from us. So when, for example, I am hiding my arms, there is something a little bit strange about the communication. There is something a little bit like it, it feels odd. So you may, may start thinking, what is that? You may, may not be aware of the fact that my hands are not visible. So he has them placed on a like, public display which helps the other person focus more on that person and like the combined point is that he is vividly gesturing and using his body to emphasize so he's moving a lot which causes that he is like a bigger object to bigger objects to be focused on and as he moves he makes himself more attractive to other people to other people's focus so it's easier to pay him more attention and you are also bigger, you are more energetic, ergo you are more likable for other people that are around there because when you are stiff and you are not moving at all, it feels a little bit strange and it feels like you, I'm a little bit weird maybe and you don't want to like be around me and listen to me. So it's easier when you are moving because you can put more emphasis into the words you are saying and also the other people are more interested in you as well so don't be afraid to move around when you are speaking it's a confident and likable and the best thing not the best thing but a huge thing about him is his broad smile open mouth smile which is just incredible and smile is so powerful body language trait that you cannot have enough of it well of course you can but generally people don't so don't be afraid to use it more use it to people even to those who you don't know so it's easier smile will make everything easier and you will be more likable more approachable and you will just have more fun that's it he establishes very solid eye contact when he's saying something and also when he's listening and I've already made a video about eye contact, you can click it down below in the description as well. Eye contact is something super important that when you have it, when you, are conf when you have confidence and you have dominance and you want to be like more likable person, you are looking people in the eyes because you want to find out maybe what they are, who they are and how they are, how they are reacting to whatever you are saying and that communicates that you are there with them at that very moment, in that second, in that time, in that place. When you are not confident, when you are not dominant, when you are submissive, you tend to look maybe down, maybe away, and that creates that strange feeling. Why? What, what's, what's wrong with him? Why he's like looking all around and he's not looking at me? It's like strange. I don't want to talk to him anymore. So look people in the eyes if you want to be considered confident, charming, and you just want to feel better in yourself. And if you if you want to like hear a little bit more about eye contact, check the video down in the description. Last but not least thing I'm going to mention is that he is not afraid to touch people. Even Ellen DeGeneres, who is famous for not allowing others to touch her, 
but touching people is a very positive sign when you do it in the right time in the right place in the right like setting because it's very advanced stage of relationship and when you are in that right time in the right place with the right person and you initiate that touch you are breaking through ice and that is very very powerful sign and those as i already said the confident people the dominant people are initiating stuff when you are initiating that as well it's a great thing to bond with those people and to show that you mean no harm to them and that you are friendly and you actually want to be closer with them that you are not afraid to get that close as as it requires see you i'll be back next uh, time yeah. I, uh, it's great to see you so that was simon baker his analysis i think i have said everything that i wanted to say for this video if you like that please like the video please share the video and if you like what i do over here on the channel i'd be very happy if you would subscribe to the channel and meet me here meet me here every wednesday because it's the time where the new video is i'm speaking about confidence body language communication charisma i'm doing analysis like this and i'll be very happy seeing you here every wednesday so i guess bye